Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Welcome to our uh, wrap-up lecture with regards to the topic lie detection techniques. So as requested by Mr. Ano, Sakiwat and the rest of you guys who wanted to have a module, I mean notes with regards to this, I will be providing you some notes later on after the discussion. And yes, good afternoon too. And uh, for the benefit also of those who cannot attend our uh, live lecture, I will be recording also the proceedings of this lecture to be uploaded into our uh, YouTube channel para pwede ninyong balikan kung meron kayong na-miss due to some technical difficulties. So this will be the coverage of your prelim exam. Everything that we will be discussing today will be part of your prelim exam. Uh, majority of the topic that we will be talking about today will be was already discussed. However, I would like to substantiate and I would like also to ask your participation if you have questions relative to our discussion. Um, reserve them later on. Ano kasi hindi ko na mabasa yung mga sa, 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 sa comment niya. So later on, I will give time for you to ask question. We start already with regards to our lecture lie detection techniques. So we have here the topics that we will be talking, the psychology of lying and the methods of detecting deception. Although there are two topics presented only here, the psychology of lying and then the methods of detecting deception. So even with those two topics alone, uh, we have a lot of subtopic that we will be talking about. So let us proceed to the first thing that we should establish. Okay, For us to understand the psychology of lying, it is important of course for us to understand why do people lie. So as you can see, um, ang pagsisinungaling is already a part of, of our everyday life. Okay, So many people tell lies by uh, due to various reasons. Marami tayong mga uh, marami sa atin or karamihan sa atin kasi sabi nga natin it is part of our daily life so me and you is uh, yung, yung lying is already a part of, of our uh, daily activities and so on and the reason for this is that it, it varies from many reasons such as for example to, to gain something and there are those person also who tell lies you know just for fun Para lang, parang nakakatuwa lang kasing magsinungaling and without being detected sometimes, nakakatuwa lang din. So clearly, we, we are establishing that everyone in our life at a certain point had already tried lying. No? Now, there is this, there is this um, article in the field of psychology that claimed that um, since we are born, we already start lying. Okay? Because they pointed out that um, even babies, kahit yung mga sanggol pa lamang, nagsisinungaling na din sila. As you can see, babies often communicate through crying. Kung may kailangan sila, iiyak sila. Pag halimbawa nagugutom ang baby, iiyak yan. So yun yung way of communication niya. Pag may gusto siyang, uh, halimbawa, naiirita, naiirita siya, iiyak yan to inform the mother or the parents or the caretaker that he needs something. So, th by that alone, he already established his way of communicating through crying. And there are some times uh, wherein a baby will try or will fake crying or will, yes, will fake crying, pekehin niyang umiyak para lang makakuha ng attention. So by that alone, no, kahit limited pa lang yung way of communication ng baby na ito, nagagawa niya ng magsinungaling. And that that is of course a fact in the field of psychology. So if if I'm going to ask you, every one of you, lahat tayo, have you tried lying already? Nasubukan mo na kayang magsinungaling. And if you're going to answer me, no, I'm I'm innocent, hindi pa ako naka, hindi pa ako nagsinungaling, never in my life, then I guess you're already lying. Because everyone, 
I'm sure not or no person had had uh, already um, resisted the temptation of telling a lies. However, maybe some some uh, maybe we can say that uh, we lie at simple matters and not on serious matters. But you know, lie is still a lie. Lie is still considered a lie. Okay. Now, since we are answering the question what is lie now why do people lie it is very much important for us to answer the the, the this question no before before we proceed to answering why do people lie it is important for us to to answer the question what is a lie okay so what is a lie what is lying and who is a liar what is a lie let us first define what is a lie Lie is defined as a false, false statement that is communicated as truth and typically it is used to deceive someone. You know, um, there is this definition of, of uh, lying or lie, the word lie itself, as a false statement that is used to deceive someone. But, however, there is a little bit of distinction by, by uh, the word lie and deception. Okay? In other references, they claim that, you know, um, lie and deception always comes in together. However, um, by strictly speaking, there is a distinction between the two, okay? Because when we talk about lies, we are pertaining to, act, uh, we're, we are pertaining to the act of misleading somebody by, by use of words, Okay, so if you are trying to mislead someone by by uttering a certain words or by uttering a certain information you know, through oral communication, then that is lying. Then when we talk about deception, this refers to the act of misleading somebody through the use of action or uh, the use of disguise and so on. So action and verbal you know, way of misleading someone is defined differently however by in, in the field of uh, polygraphy or lie detection they they can always be used interchangeably uh, whether that's lie or um, deception okay now let us also answer the question uh, what is lying okay lying uh, pertains to the action of telling a lie. So let's say, for example, we have here uh, Mr. Pedro. What if Mr. Pedro told the police officer that he saw um, one took the wallet of Maria? Okay, so that's the circumstances. Mr. Pedro told the police officer that he saw one took the wallet of Maria. The question is. Is Pedro lying? Is Pedro telling a lie? If if we are going to you know instantly judge the situation by, by itself, then you would probably ah uh, yes, he is lying. But then the, the the right answer for this is no, he is not lying. Why? Because if we're going to restate again what, what I've stated. Mr. Pedro told police officer that he saw one took the wallet of Maria. It means that Mr. Pedro, Pedro only accuses one as the person who took the wallet of Maria. Now, there is a distinction between accusation and lying. Because if, if you said accusation, that, that maybe is the truth. Or... Um, a lie. So there's a distinction between that. Whether the accusation is true or not, then it's up to the proper authority to determine that. And of course, in the field of lie detection, it is up to us to differentiate whether the statement, whether the accusation is indeed true or uh, a truth or a mere lie. Okay. So accusation does not mean that it is a lie. Okay, now, you might uh, realize that there is really a significant uh, 
contribution that detecting deception will bring into the field of law enforcement and uh, maybe not in the field of law enforcement but in in our daily life if we will believe everyone's accusations no? if if uh, we will listen to all of their accusation and accept it readily as fact then definitely that's a big problem di ba bigla na lang basta merong sinabi halimbawa kanina you are the police officer and there is a witness who claims that this person is the person who committed the crime no? pinakinggan mo na lang without even verifying whether the information relayed upon upon you is uh, is really the truth okay so what will happen if we will not make a way for us to distinguish truth from lie of course our um society will will face um chaos definitely it will be very uh, chaotic if if we are not going to verify this information that is being relayed to to us no and also, it will uh, give birth to distrust, guilt, and because of all of uh, because of all of this, uh, crime will surely rise as a result. If we are no longer, t uh, if the society, if the member of the society does no longer see the those individuals as trustworthy, then definitely there will be no cooperation. There will be no uh, um, extending of, you know, uh, sympathy. Or, and that is already a big opportunity for the criminals to take advantage upon. Okay? Because, like, like for example, you are in a neighborhood. No? Meron ka sa isang, uh, let's say, a certain village or a certain subdivision wherein people don't trust their neighbors people don't trust uh, the persons that surrounds them so it is very easy for you if you are the criminal to take advantage of those circumstances to commit your crime because number one they don't care about uh, each other and there is already a big opportunity for criminals to take advantage okay so I hope you you realize how important it is to detect deception and how important it is to verify the uh, nature or the source of the information. Sorry for that. So uh, we are already done with regards to that and now let us uh, proceed to the different types of lie. We have a discussion on this already in our uh, channel, but uh, I would like to reiterate also the I would like to substantiate that part. And I know all of you already have watched that discussion since you are commenting on that. Now let us talk about the different types of lie. We have here number one, white lie. And then, pathological lie, red lie, black lie, and malicious lie. These types of lie is classified based on the nature of the act. Okay? So, let's say, for example, we have white lie. White lie is uh, a type of lie that uh, is altered for the purpose of protecting or preserving significant relationship. You know, um, white lie is also considered as benign lie. It is a type of lie that is not serious in manner or matter. No? It is conducted or it is done for the purpose of protecting someone's relationship. Like for example, uh, a circle of friends, kayong magkakaibigan, you sometimes defend or lie to, uh, to your other friends in order to protect your relationship as friends correct minsan uh, nag nagsasabi tayo ng kasinungalingan sa kaibigan din natin 
para lamang pagprotektahan uh, at para lamang hindi lumala yung kung ano man yung issue within that circle of friends. Like for example, nag-aaway yung dalawa niyong kaibigan. Are you going to tell everything na sinasabi ng isa niyong kaibigan sa kaaway niya? Or are you going to mediate by not telling um, information that you you think that will probably um, aggravate the current situation that you are in? So, those are lies. Okay, Those are lies. However, the intention of telling those lies is, you know, uh, pure. You may say pure kasi... Hindi naman masama ang intensyon nyo, kundi ang intensyon nyo lang naman, wag nang lumala kung ano man yung issue doon sa dalawang tao na yan. So that, that is sometimes considered as a white lie. Okay? Or there are some lies also like for example simple, ma simple matters like uh, tanungin ka, kumain ka na ba, um, kamusta ka, okay ka lang ba, and then you would answer yes even if you are not. So you don't have any... Uh, bad intention in telling those lies but you know just just to make you know, just to uh, not bother somebody you know? so you would rather tell those lies than to ano yun, parang parang idamay mo pa sila doon sa pinagdaraanan mo so that will be considered as white lie. However, I, I would tell you this, huh? lie is still a lie. So even if that is white lie, it doesn't mean that it is okay to lie as long as the intention is good. Okay? You know, lie is still a lie. And we have the saying eh, that the truth will set you free. And sometimes we might think that telling a lie will uh, make the situation better, but it does not really make that way. Rather, we are only making some um, excuses or some other way for us to to avoid being put into a jeopardizing situation. Kaya minsan nagsasabi tayo ng mga white lie. What, what, ano masama if, if you're going to tell the truth? Okay? Kung ganito talaga yung sinabi, then wala namang masama if sasabihin mo talaga. Although, sometimes you're being ostracized for, for being too honest. No? Meron din naman yung mga na kinakainisan nila or kina maraming nakakaaway dahil masyado siyang tapat sa mga sinasabi niya. No? So, th that's the situation that we need to face with, with regards to this. Kasi if you are very honest, there are people who will hate you. No? But if you're also dishonest, there are still, meron pa rin, pero mas marami siguro ang magagalit pa rin sa'yo. So it's about principle. Okay? So if you really want to remain honest, regardless of the situation or regardless of the consequences of your action, then I think it's better to tell the truth than to make a false uh, belief. What about pathological lie? So pathological lies are uh, pathological lie are, are those types of lie that is uttered by those individuals who are suffering from um, pathological disorders such as mental disorder and so on. So it is their situation. It is uh, their biological make makes makeups that makes them tell a lie. It's it's not their choice to tell lie, but rather. Uh, they cannot clearly distinguish what is truth from lie and sometimes they, they lack yung sinasabi nating feeling of remorse. Okay? It is the, the hardest form of lie to deal with because, you know, usual liar have a uh, sense of guilt. Okay? So if, if, they, uh, if they have this sense of guilt, sense of remorse, this will affect their behavior. So it's hard to deal with them because um, they they lack the you know the, the the feeling of remorse and that feeling of remorse is the key for us to easily identify who is telling the truth or who is lying because you know if you have that feeling of remorse, di ba meron meron yung yung psychological effect kasi niyan is kung nakukonsensya ka there will be physiological symptoms that we can observe from that person when he is stating that statement.
So, kung wala yun, mahihirapan tayong i-identify. Because, um, hindi sila magkakaroon ng, alam mo yun, yung, yung parang uh, pag-aalinlangan, pag magsasabi sila ng, ng uh, kasinungalingan, parang natural lang sa kanila ang magsabi ng kasinungalingan. And yun yung delikado. No? Also for us, ibig, uh, sa, sa atin, halimbawa, meron tayong mga nakikitang tao na kayang magsabi kahit kasinungalingan, purong kasinungalingan, pero parang totoo. Kasi nga, hindi natin nakikita sa kanilang mga mata, sa kanilang kilos, yung pag-aalinlangan doon sa mga sinasabi nila. And that is usually the characteristic of a pathological liar. No? Who utters pathological lie? Then we have also red lie. Now, red lie is a type of lie known as propaganda. No? These are informations that, uh, distributed to affect the political belief of one person. And red lie usually targets democratic form of government and try to reverse it to communist form. Have you ever heard somebody telling us uh, negative against the government when it's clearly it's positive? Di ba may mga taong ganun? May mga grupo tayong nakikita na ganun na kung saan puro puna yung kanilang ginagawa but they don't really uh, appreciate all the efforts of a certain government. I'm not saying that we relate it to the current government that we, we are in. Kasi that, that is our freedom. No? You have, uh, that is the freedom granted to us by, by our Philippine Constitution. Because I remember before, one in, in one of my lectures, no, merong nag-react with regards to me uh, stating that the, you know, the, the different, I mean, the, the Communist Party of the Philippines is um, committing an act that is that can be probably considered as terrorism because they wanted to to affect or they wanted to to mingle with with the functioning of the government of the established government. There, there is a distinction between the act of communism and the act of terrorism, and I made it clear in, in my response to him. Now, the nature of a red lie is that, of course, it's a lie. There's no problem if the propaganda contains the truth. I mean, if they're clearly stating the truth that is really happening into our society. Let's say, for example, they will claim that there's a lot of corruption in the government. If that is the truth, then that is not considered as a red lie because it, they are just uh, stating what is the truth. No? However, if they're trying already to manipulate the opinion of the society towards a certain political belief, then that is already considered as a red lie, especially if those information that they are sharing is not really the truth. Okay? They may sometimes blame the government for the for the poverty that the uh, society is suffering. They might probably blame the government for for the medical crisis that is we are currently facing right now. And if don't if the, the, those information are not substantiated by fact, then clearly those are considered as red lie. And for you, no, we are very uh, sad that. Uh, the seminars relative to this did not push through. Uh, there, there is a seminars that the armed forces of the Philippines is trying to conduct to reach out those uh, students, to reach out those um, the, the younger generations in order for them to be brief and to be informed of the different way on how the Communist Party of the Philippines is trying to recruit from the group of the students especially on the college level no but uh, hopefully someday uh, you can attend some of their seminars now we have also black lie black lie is a type of lie used to discredit or destroy someone's character and it is the it is considered as the most destructive forms of lie 
as it clearly tries to affect someone through false claim and accusation. The red lie is targeted towards a certain established government. But black lie, uh, ang black lie naman is targeting a certain, uh, a certain individual. So if a lie is directed to a certain person and that lie is for the purpose of discrediting him or destroying his uh, character and so on, then that is considered as a black lie. Di ba? Ito yung mga tinatawag natin sa salita natin na chismis na kung saan gumagawa o gumagawa sila ng mga kwento para siraan ang isang tao. That is a black lie. We have also malicious lie. A malicious lie is a type of lie that is intentionally done to mislead the judicial process. Now, when we talk about malicious lie, these are types of lies usually made under oath or during the court proceeding. So meron yung tinatawag nating perjury. It is a crime wherein if you swear under oath inside the court that you will tell the truth, nothing but the truth, but still you uttered falsehood information, then that will be considered as a crime of perjury. And those types of lie are considered as malicious lie. Malicious because they try to mislead the justice process. Diba? Nag-testify ka inside the court na sige, ganito yung nag-commit ng crime. However, yun pala ay para idiin mo lang yung isang tao na yan sa kasalanang hindi naman niya ginawa. That is malicious lie. Nag-testify ka na walang kinalaman yung, yung taong ito sa nangyaring krimen. However, it appears that you are just trying to protect that person because maybe he is your relative, he is your good friend, or meron kang utang na loob sa taong yan. Those are considered as malicious lie. The key word here is that it mislead the judicial process. Okay? Now, let's talk about liar. Who is a liar? Liar refers to the person who communicates false information. Generally, uh, we can classify liars into two based on their mental faculties. We discussed already in our previous lecture the two general classification of liars based on their mental faculties, the nature on how they uh, uh, rationalize everything. So we have two types of liars according to mental faculties. Those are rational liar and irrational liar. So when we talk about rational liar, basically these are the types of liars who tell lies due to interpersonal reasons and those reasons might be affected by emotion or needs for satisfaction. Diba? Karaniwan, ang isang matinong tao pag nagsisinungaling yan ay dahil yan sa pansarili niyang kadahilanan. Either uh, beneficial kasi sa kanya yon kaya niya nagawang magsinungaling, or hindi naman kaya is um, masasatisfy siya pag ginawa niya yun kaya siya nagsinungaling. So for example, ikaw nagsisinungaling ka para, para maiiwas ang sarili mo sa pwedeng mangyari sa iyo like like for example, you are being accused of a crime and you are forced to tell lies in order to protect yourself from being punished or from, be from being scrutinized, then you are classified as a rational liar. No? The, the motivation of rational liars are usually satisfaction and needs. The, rational or the irrational liars, on the other hand, lies for a reason that is beyond their control. So they are suffering from mental disorder which which um, lessens their potential to to resist from it. Wala silang kakayahang pigilin yung sarili nila kaya nila nagagawang magsinungaling. So it's not really their choice to tell lies but it's it's a product of their biological makeup. With that, we're going to discuss also the different classification of liars based on the nature of 
the lies that they committed. So we have the first classification, we have the sociopathic liar. These types of liars are usually afflicted with sociopathic tendencies and they are considered as irrational liar since, of course, psychopathy, uh, sociopathy is a mental disorder, okay? So, if, you know, if, if you have a sociopathic tendency, I mean, you just hate the society itself. No? You don't want to, to have anything to do or to deal with the society. Sometimes you just shut yourself in and you don't care about how the society will perceive you, how the society will, will treat you if you're going to tell lies. You don't care. No, wala kang pakialam sa society. No? You just, um, how do you call that? You only focuses to the things that will benefit you. No? And you have nothing to do with the society. Parang ganun ba? So that is the nature of the sociopathic liar. And sabi nga natin, that is irrational type of liar. We have also compulsive liars. Again, compulsive liar is classified as irrational liar. We have the compulsion. No? You probably heard of maniac. Yung mga mania, different mania na tinatawag natin. Like kleptomania, that's the compulsive desire to steal. No? Is it their choice that they're stealing? No. They're stealing because they can't resist. They have that compulsion to, to do that thing. And there are also those individuals who have compulsion to utter lies. Meaning, they... they feel irritated whenever they are not telling lie or if if they you know they are they really feel excited when they are going to uh mislead somebody by telling a lie so it's it's a compulsion it's it's a mental problem it's a behavioral problem uh, and of course easy to understand because they are irrational there are studies that proves that Okay, this is how to deal with compulsive liar. However, the problem is if you are not aware of the circumstances of that person. What if you are not aware that he possess that compulsion? So I'm I'm thinking of a good example for this. I don't know if you watch the the news regarding uh regarding the family na, na kumain ng poisonous na crabs, I think. No? What if, okay, ito ah, ito ang scenario na naisip ko. I know it's funny, but I, I think we should not make fun of this, but I'm just going to share. What if, yung taong nagsabi na nauulam yung crab na yun is a compulsive liar. I mean, gusto niya lang pagtripan, no? Kahit alam niyang nakalalason yung, yung pagkain na yun, sabi niya, okay lang yan, nakakain yan, masarap nga yan eh. <laughs> Just for fun. But since the person did not uh, was not aware, yung pinagsabihan was not aware of the nature of, of that person, no? hindi ko sinasabing ito exactly ang nangyari. I'm just saying, what if? No? So, hindi siya aware na meron palang ganong circumstances yung taong nagsabi sa kanya and he believed on his statement and kinain niya nga yung deadly uh, poisonous crabs na yun, crab na yun. So, what happened? Napahamak sila. No? Uh, napahamak sila. Now, what if... No, the, the reason for me of mentioning that is just to show you how how uh, dangerous it is to deal with a compulsive liar it is very dangerous no to deal with them because it might put you into trouble or um seriously into death no okay so hindi ko sinasabing sinungaling yung nagsabi no i'm just saying that for the purpose of having an example no so it's very dangerous to deal with this person Kasi, they will insist that what they have stated is the truth. No? If you're not aware on detecting deception, if you're not aware of the symptoms of being a compulsive liar and so on, then definitely it will put you into 
danger. Or words, death. Occasional liars, these are types of liars that pertain to the group of individual that utter lies when faced a situation where telling lies will guarantee more benefit than uttering truth. You know, we are sometimes can be considered all as occasional liar. I mean, we don't lie every time, but once we are put in a certain situation wherein we have the choice to pick whether uh, are we going to tell the truth, even if it will hurt us, or are we going to tell lies to make it more pleasing to ourselves and to the other person. So if you're facing those situations and you choose to lie now in those types of situation, then you can be considered as an occasional liar. You only lie if the situation is conducive of uh, conducive to tell lies. You know, you know, parang mas beneficial magsinungaling at this specific time kaya kesa magsabi ng totoo. That is the nature of an occasional liar. Panic liar. What about panic liar? Panic liar is not considered as you know, lying is not considered their forte. No? Kaya hindi sila magaling talaga magsinungaling. Magsisinungaling lang sila when they're facing a situation that gives them too much anxiety and pressure. No? And in order for them to avoid that feeling, they sometimes result into lying. Alam mo yung parang uh, nabitag ka na, na, na corner ka na, and you don't have any choice no other than to tell lies. So, nagsisinungaling ka or napipilitan kang nagsisinungaling if wala ka ng ibang maisip na pwede pang gawin kung hindi, o para ilusot yung sarili mo or alisin yung anxiety or pressure na nilalagay sa'yo by by uh, being asked of a certain question that will be you know, jeopardizing to your part. So, you will be considered as a panic liar. Next is we have the occupational liar. These liars uh, prioritize the benefit that they might gain from lying. And we can consider them as practical individual. You know? And sometimes their uh, lies are related to their job or to their occupation. And, uh, you know, opportunistic is, is the proper word that we can use with that. If the opportunity is very apparent i mean they they can be able to climb the social uh, uh they can climb the ahead social status by telling lies then they will tell lies <laughs> i would say politicians what else um some other profession like uh being a lawyer sometimes uh, what else? I think there's a lot of occupation that really uh, is considered as an occupational liars because of the nature of their occupation, such as you're in advertisement. You know, most advertisements are really um, good to, uh, to hear, but uh, in reality, it's not really what is happening. So if you're in those types of occupation, then you might see lying as a part of the business itself okay so you often tell lies in order to guarantee a good market and those are considered as an occupational liar whatever what about tournament liar these types of liar is considered uh, these types of liar considered lying as a game you know they feel happy if they deceive someone and they feel happy if uh, they can get away with their lies. It's a part of, it, it, it's just a game. I mean, uh, they're just testing like, it's also hard to deal with this individual, especially in the field of law enforcement because they try to measure the intellect of the police officer they, they are dealing with by telling lies. And their end goal is to, is to play with with the police officer or with with those individuals they're uh, usually communicating with. No? So they receive satisfaction by winning the game of lies. So if they succeeded in lying, 
then they are very much satisfied by it because they consider the they consider telling lies as their uh, craft as their games and as their trade okay so if those individuals lies just for the purpose of having fun or challenging challenging themselves to how uh, to how to become a better liar then they can be considered as a tournament liar psychopathic liar are classification of liars classified again under the irrational liars and of course they're affected with mental problem and uh, we can really connect this to pathological lie as these are the individual who lies and don't have any remorse in telling lies so you can see as you can see the the nature of irrational liars is almost the same they don't have control over their behavior and they don't have control over their action that is why they tell lies and sometimes they cannot really distinguish truth from lies so that makes the situation even worse because uh, they might not see themselves as a liar but rather just a normal person telling truthful information we also have ethnological liar i think i have not included this on the presentation ethnological liars are types of individuals who are trained specifically to lie okay so there are those individuals who are trained to lie like for example you are a spy now if you are a spy it's part of your training to to um, master the skill of lying because sometimes you need to leave a fake you know identity you need to leave a fake uh, life for the purpose of succeeding in your mission no? so they are trained to be good at lying that is ethnological liar they have been subjected to rigorous training just to develop themselves from uh, mastering the art of lying okay so it's just part of the job then we have pathological liar. These are individuals who cannot distinguish truth from lies in relation to psychopathic liars, sociopathic liars, and other types of irrational liar. Black liar. Okay, you remember black lie? Who told black lie? Of course, black liars. Black liars are types of liars who specifically lies to discredit someone maliciously. And their motivation is usually hate jealousy revenge and other similar reasons why do people tell lies against certain individual maybe they're jealous or maybe they wanted revenge or maybe they just hate that person that is the reason why they tell black lie and that is also the motivation of black liars they, since their lies is targeted to a specific person uh, and if you are doing that to a specific person, then it's easy to understand why. Maybe you hate him, maybe you're just jealous with him, or maybe you wanted revenge against that person. Then we have also white liar in relation to white lie. These are types of lies, uh, liars, that can be considered also as benign liars. They may lie to um, a certain... They may lie to a certain thing, but again, the motivation for them of telling lies is very pure. No? Maybe just to protect a relationship, maybe just to protect friendship, or maybe just to uh, not to hurt anyone by telling the truth. Okay. Now, uh, let us proceed to lying. What is lying, by the way? Lying refers to the action of uttering lie now we have the question be, uh, before we have the why do people lie it's very interesting to understand why lying exists why do people tell lies now you might ask somebody somebody that you know whom you caught lying 
Why do you lie? Why are you lying to me? No? It's very interesting indeed to determine why do people tell lies. And it's really important to know one's motivation in lying. Sometimes it's uh, as simple as it appears Lying has been a part already of our history and even biblically speaking, let's say for example, the case of uh, one, no? oh, I mean not one, John, one of the apostles of Christ in the Bible. Diba when John was asked whether he was with Jesus, when Jesus was being prosecuted, no? when, when he is being prosecuted, John denied that he knows he knows Jesus and he is with Jesus. Okay. So that's a funny thing to to use an example. But since we're just uh since we wanted to look into the historical background of lying and the nature of lying itself, then we might include that or we might choose that as an example. So kung ikaw si John at that time, nakikita mo si Jesus pinaparusahan na and he was arrested, right? And he's being prosecuted. He's being punished. And biglang mag, may nagtanong sa'yo, Ikaw, di ba kasama mo yun? Then you would probably deny. Uh, but um, if you're going to look into the situation, how many of you kaya ang magsasabi or ang aamin kaya na, Oh, kasama ko yan. Knowing that if inamin mo na kasama mo ngayon, you will be arrested and punished also. So, probably you would say, oh, John has no balls, hindi niya kaya palang panindigan yung, yung pagkakaibigan nila o yung, yung uh, hindi niya kayang panindigan yung sinumpaan niya na susundin niya, susundan niya lahat ang yapak ni, ni Jesus sa, sa kanilang uh, advoka, uh, advokasiya no? at that specific moment. No? Bigla siyang na, natahimik at bigla siyang na nagsinungaling na itinakwil niya na meron silang kaugnayan ni Jesus. So even in the Bible, there are already a lot of stories that involves lying. No? And uh, to answer the question, what really motivates a certain person to lie? Then we need to go back to the utilitarian philosophy of Jeremy Bentham wherein they claim or Jeremy Bentham in his utilitarian uh, philosophy claims that person the person's action is motivated by avoidance of uh, avoidance of pain and seeking of pleasure no? so if we apply this to John no at the previous story that we made mention then it is really applicable. Why did he choose to deny his um, connection with Jesus at the time is probably because he is afraid. No? And he uh, tries to avoid the possible pain that he will receive if he will tell the truth. So lying is also an action. No? Ang, ang, ang pagsisinungaling is also considered as an action. So, therefore, it is also affected by our tendency to calculate pain versus pleasure and whichever is the beneficial, we, we always choose to pick the thing that is beneficial to us. So, to answer the question, why do people lie? Definitely, that is, of course, to avoid pain and seek pleasure. No one really uh with with the rational mind uh goes directly after pain no wala naman sigurong susuong sa hirap no kung meron ka namang pagpipilian but of course if you are righteous no if you have that character of being righteous then definitely regardless if it's painful as long as i'm going to tell the truth uh, so doon tayo nagkakatalo so, all of these things mentioned with regards to this definitely is applicable only when we are dealing with rational individual. Uh, itong mga utilitarian philosophy 
itong fear avoidance o itong uh, pain avoidance itong pain avoidance or di naman kaya is um, seeking pleasure principles are things that are only applicable usually to rational individual. Pag irrational individual lang pinag-iisapan natin, yung mga irrational liar, eh ibang usapan na po yan because uh, these things might not be applicable to them because they have the mental problem or mental disorder as we are talking about them. Okay? Okay pa ba tayo? <laughs> okay, so uh, let us proceed to physiological responses of lying. Uh, so when we talk about physiological uh, responses of lying, these are the apparent uh, visible changes that will appear into the movement of a certain person movement and behavior of a certain person when he is lying. You know, the body system is usually affected by the act of lying. No? And the body system that is affected by the act of lying is known as the nervous system. Just, just an overview with regards to this. Specifically, the peripheral nervous system, because we have the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, then we have the peripheral nervous system, composed of the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system and actions are usually affected by the different motor sensors directly connected to human brain the somatic nervous system usually controls yung mga tinatawag nating voluntary actions such as for example yung um, mga actions to which we have a direct con direct control to to it like uh, the act of talking since we have direct control to it if we want to if we want to talk then we can talk but if we don't want then we cannot so we have control over it talking eating walking and similar activities while the autonomic nervous system affects take note of this huh? somatic nervous system controls those voluntary actions those actions that we have control Autonomic nervous system affects those actions we don't have direct control, such as, for example, breathing. Okay, So we cannot control our breathing. You might try to affect it, but literally you don't have control over it. Na? Kung sabihin mo, sir, kaya ko namang kontrolin ang paghinga ko, okay, then kontrolin mo nga for about one hour if you can. But if you cannot, na? hindi mo kayong pigilan ng sarili mong huminga ng one hour, two hours, or three hours, then ibig sabihin, you don't have complete control over it. What else? We have also heart palpitation, sweating, and other similar actions. So that is the distinction between those. Somatic nervous system controls those voluntary actions. Autonomic nervous system controls those involuntary actions. Why, uh, why did I mention this? Because physiological responses of lying can be both observed, observed when there will be significant changes on the normal functioning of the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. So let's say for example, uh, we have here uh, Mr. Pedro. He was accused to be the person who stole the, um, who took the wallet of Miss Maria and then because of that accusation, uh, suddenly, Mr. Pedro feel anxious, he feel irritable, no? nagbago yung kanyang uh, normal movement, nagbago yung kanyang behavior. So what does it signify? or what does it imply? It only implies that the stimulus, which is the accusation, affected the normal functioning of Mr. Pedro. No? in terms of his actions and in terms of his behavior. Pag ikaw ba ay wala naman kinalaman or kasalanan sa isang bagay na inaakusa sa iyo, what how will it affect your uh, functioning? Will it rattle you kaya, no? Pa Mapapanerbiyos ka kaya o maiirita maiirita ka kaya? So those are the things. Now, if 
you are being accused, sometimes majority na, no? majority naman, kasi there are those individual kasi na kahit wala silang kasalanan, masyado lang silang nerbyoso. And sometimes, the fact na sila ay pinagbintangan is already enough to fake to make them feel nervous or to make them feel anxious. Now, majority of individual, pag pinagbintangan ng isang bagay na wala naman silang kaalam-alam, eh wala lang. I mean, it does not affect them. No? It does not bother them at all because they know for themselves that they are not guilty or they have nothing to do with, with the thing that they are accusing to them. I mean, if you are going to accuse me of like this, okay. I, I don't uh, really care because I know for myself that I'm not involved in that matter. So, if the same accusation will be thrown to a person who have something to do with the act, no? with the crime, then definitely he will be pressured. No? He will be affected by it because he fears, decept uh, he fears detection. Ganun lang yun. So, under the physiological response, no? and a stimulus, like for example an accusation, will definitely affect or change the mood, behavior, and action of a person who has something to do with the crime, but does not bother or affect a person who is not uh, guilty at all. So that's, that's how they, they try to justify the use of you know the observation method the use of scientific method because definitely in a certain scenario where a person is being accused of a crime and he has something to do with it may kinalaman siya doon sa crime na inaccuse sa kanya there will really be an observable changes that will transpire into his action mood and behavior okay so that is the basis of lie detection techniques they usually observe or records and interpret the changes that the person will manifest when he is being uh, confronted with an accusation or with, with a certain question. Now, let us talk about the practical ways to detect lie. We have here, you know, we discussed already the seven, right? There are many ways, actually. There are many ways to detect lies without depending much on scientific instrument. Where is this base? Saan ito nakabase? It is based on the physiological response of lying or the changes that might appear into the body. You know, a good lie detector no, can distinguish the lying person from a truthful person by just observing his actions and behaviors without relying uh, without relying to scientific instrument like polygraph no and so on if you are experienced well experienced in dealing with this whether you have official training or not but if you have sufficient experience that already trained you to become a good lie detector by just observing the behavior, actions, and mood of a certain person before they will, uh, before they were confronted, and after they will, they are confronted with a stimulus. Then definitely, you can be able to identify who is telling the truth or who is lying. But anyway, we have here some predictors. We made mention of the seven predictors already, like for example, avoidance of eye contact. Uh, changes in voice, unusual body movement, inconsistencies, uh, an overly defensive, being uh, or using or being, you know, a person which changes the subject, e subject easily, or sometimes use humor or sarcasm, and others. So we only listed here seven, but there are many of the, uh, there are still many of the physical predictors of um, a liar. No? However, uh, take note that, you know, it maybe is thrilling to have the ability to detect lie no? by just observing physical changes appearing to someone during regular conversation, but uh, sometimes hold yourself. No? We must understand first that 
any of the above, no? yung mga binanggit natin kanina, may also be produced by other factors other than lying. Pwede naman kasing ang tao ay gumagamit ng humor or sarcasm because it's his nature. No? Kung palabiro talaga siya, pilosopo talaga siya, baka naman talaga yun yung kanyang normal na behavior. So you cannot use that against him. What if uh, ang nature ng taong yan talaga is let's say with regards to avoidance of eye contact, di ba? What if ang nature niya talaga hindi siya mahilig or nahihiya siya, mahihain siya kaya hindi siya nakikipagtitigan? Would you use that as an evidence to tell that he is lying? Would you? Of course not. That is why it's very important to establish the baseline na tinatawag natin. Bago mo obserbahan yung isang tao, alamin mo muna kung ano yung kanyang normal responses. Ano yung kanyang normal behaviors and actions. Ano yung mga normal mannerism niya. Kasi if basta ka lang magre-rely in these different signs and symptoms of lying without even knowing the the background of that person without even knowing the normal action or mannerism of that person then you will probably conclude wrong okay so that's very important establish the baseline establish the normal behavior normal mannerism of that person before you can interpret and use this different sign against him let us move to the different methods of detecting deception. We have here the three classification, ancient methods, observational methods, and technical methods. We discussed this already, I believe. Ancient methods, this refers to the methods that uses yung mga old way of detecting deception such as you know trial by ordeals and so on. We have also observational method. One of your classmates, I think, si... Um, Miss Joylin as what about the police method? Yung police method natin usually involves interrogation uh, techniques, usually involves yung yung interview uh, interview and interrogation techniques, and that's still part of the interrogation process. Because under interrogation and interview techniques, they're still using the physical predictors physical symptoms and signs of lying. So while they're asking questions, they're still looking into those um, specific changes into the actions and movements of a certain person. Di ba habang ine-interrogate ine mo yung isang tao, hindi lang naman yung mga sagot niya yung tinitignan mo dun eh. Kailangan mo ring intindihin yung kanyang mga body movements and actions. Because those also will serve as a basis for you to continue or to to uh, stop the interrogation process already. Da? Kasi may mga taong uh, hindi nagbibigyan ng informasyon agad-agad pero makikita mo sa mga action nila na meron silang alam or meron silang kinalaman doon sa uh, pinag-uusapan ninyong krimen. So, observation or police methods da, are still part of the observational methods. Then we have technical methods. Dito na paggagamit na tayo ng mga scientific instrument like for example the use of polygraphy, the use of psychological stress evaluator, the use of word association tests and others that is already a scientific instrument that is used under the technical methods. So we have only three general methods in detecting deception. And they are those ancient methods. As uh, I've heard, nga, it's very interesting that in your activity, some of your classmates made mention that uh, there are still some tribes that still practices the uh, trial by combat, the boil ordeal by boiling water, and so on. So it's very interesting to know. I thought there are no tribes already that, that practice that. But respect to those tribes that still maintain no? that still maintains those types of traditions. But uh, of course, legally speaking, no, yung mga ancient methods na to, legally speaking, are no longer uh, acceptable as an evidence unless they have yung mga tinatawag nating uh, sarili nilang pamamaraan. Like for example, for Kalinga, I believe we have the Budong system and uh, 
maybe other tribes has that types also no if it's part of of the judicial uh, judicial process that they ad they had adopted now based on their tribal uh, laws then it is acceptable on their part and can be acceptable also if used legally but then they must cite a certain provision of their tribal laws because uh, some of our law no even even our revised penal code still um respect the decisions coming from the different tribal laws and an example for that is of course we have you know yung mga laws of the minority like we have also the sharia law no sa, sa mga muslim natin which the revised penal code respect them in terms of yung mga civil cases only pero pag criminal case na ibang usapan na yan i mean you cannot settle a criminal litigation through tribal laws no so if if for example on your tribal law let, let's say ano uh let's say trial by combat so if they're practicing trial by combat and somebody was killed because because of that do you still have the the authority or do you still have the right to push through a certain case against against the person na pumatay doon sa sa tao i, I believe uh, pwede pa rin no Kasi ang respect lang ng ating batas pagdating sa mga laws of the minority is for civil cases only. Kung halimbawa sa crime ng pagnanakaw, sa, sa crime ng pagsisinungaling, mga ganun. That, yun yung mga pwedeng uh, pakialaman pa rin ng mga uh, laws of the minority or mga tribal laws natin. But when it comes to criminal acts or public crime, the general law that we have, the revised penal code, uh, code should apply. So that's with regards to ancient method. No? Now let's talk about the early and contemporary methods of detecting deceptions such as ordeal. We discussed that already as the, you know, the ancient method of detecting deception. Ordeal pertains to the act of putting the accused into different challenges, you know, Sometimes it's hard to surpass, impossible to surpass rather. But they believe that if a person is innocent, he can surpass that um, challenge because God is with him. If not, then he will perish. Then we have also the polygraph as one of the contemporary methods of detecting deception. When we talk about polygraph, this refers to the method of detecting deception with the use of a machine. Now, and that machine records the breathing pattern, pulse rate, blood pressure, skin conductivity to electricity and other. No? Meron yung mga polygraph na nagme-measure na rin ng uh, movement no? na those advanced types of polygraph. But basically, the ordinary polygraph usually measures three, the pulse rate, the breathing pattern, and the skin conductivity to electricity or the use of the GSR. We have also the word association test. We have also the word association test. No? Um, word association test is uh, had originated in the field of psychology. by uh, It is uh, conceptualized by Carl Gustav Jung. No? Usually, a um, word association test is used to determine or to predict the behavior of a certain person. A um, word association test usually is like a sentence completion. I mean, they're just going to present some some words and um, you state what what comes into your mind first. Like, for example, it's very hot, then continue. Uh, ano yung idudugtong mo dun. That's the nature of the word association test because they believe that uh, kung, kung ano yung unang lumabas sa isip mo pag narinig mo yung isang word na yan, that will that, that is really a good predictor to determine your behavior kasi it is coming from your subconscious. Eh. Yung mga subconscious uh, thoughts mo sometimes are things that uh, can be used to determine your uh, behavior or those that can be used to predict your future behavior in dealing with things. Like, for example, um, let's say, for example, there's a knife no? and 
ang dinagdag mo dun is a negative word. Like for example, a use knife for what? No? Kung halimbawa, yung word lang, I use a knife instead of um, adding the sent adding to the sentence, I use knife for for chopping vegetable. You you stated or you completed the sentence by I use knife for stabbing someone. So you are really uh, homopho uh, homophobic. You are really a homicidal type of person, wherein you are thinking always of hurting somebody. That's on the field of psychology. What about in the field of lie detection? How can they use the word association test uh, in in lie detection? So under word association test, what they're measuring here or how they adopted the concept of word association test to lie detection is that they're going to formulate a question and answer, a question that are answerable by yes or no. And then, what they're looking upon here is how fast you respond to questions. Diba? If they're going to ask you a certain question, then you answer immediately. No? They're going to study the time lapse. Gaano kakabilis sumagot in relation to your answer. Let's say, for example, did you kill Pedro? And you answered immediately no. So that may be interpreted as you know being truthful. No? But if they ask you the same question but there is a delay on your answer, ibig sabihin parang inisip mo pa kung ano yung tama mong sagot. Diba? The nature of a person is kapag alam niya talaga yung mga, alam niya yung mga tanong, no? or kung may direct knowledge siya doon sa tanong, hindi na yan nag-iisip eh. Agad-agad sasagot yan. Pero kung medyo nag-aalangan siya, that is already a sign that maybe there is something off with this person. And maybe there is something off with the question he asks. Kaya may, medyo napag-isip pa siya. Kasi the more you process on your mind, kasi habang nade-delay, ano? habang nade-delay yung pagsagot mo sa isang tanong, parang ang dating nun is uh, tinitimbang mo muna. Ano ba yung possible consequences pag sumagot ako ng yes? At ano ba yung possible consequences pag sumagot ako ng no? The more careful you are, no? the more it appears to, to the examiner, to the, lie detect, uh, yes, to the lie detector, that you are trying to hide something. No? Meron kang tinatago. And that is a good predictor in determining whether a person is telling the truth or lying. Next is we have narcoanalysis or narcosynthesis. I have a separate discussion to this. No? If you haven't watched that yet, kindly watch that. We featured narcoanalysis or narcosynthesis or commonly known as the truth serum. This method usually is uh, known as truth serum and they usually use a uh, different types of drugs that has a mind altering components no? and that drugs usually induce the state of suggestibility yung kayang pasunurin yung isang tao because he is under the influence of a certain types of drug no? now because of that drugs nababawasan yung potential ng isang tao na pigilin yung kanyang sarili sa pagbibigay ng impormasyon or pagsasalita uh, di naman kaya is nababawasan yung kakayahan ng isang taong gumawa-gawa ng kwento. That, that is where the concept of narcoanalysis or narcosynthesis is capitalizing. Yun yung uh, pinagbabasihan uh, nila. No? Kayang pababain nito yung kakayahan ng isang taong magsinungaling at pigilan ang kanyang sarili sa pagbibigay ng impormasyon. That is why they term is uh, they termed it as truth serum. But however, sabi ko nga, hindi siya talaga serum, but rather, it's a drugs. So, the proper term to be used for that is narcoanalysis or narcosynthesis. We have also the term hypnosis. Imagine that. Even hypnosis is being used sometimes as a way of detecting deception. Na? Ano ba yung hypnosis? Yun yung parang pinapa, uh, pinaparelax ka, pinapasunod ka, then later on, you will be uh, question of, of your knowledge with regards to uh, some crimes or some events. 
Now, sa hypnosis, it, it's uh, they're putting the person into the same manner as the narcosynthesis. They're putting the, the person into uh, a state of suggestibility. And yung awareness niya is half-half lang. Parang aware siyang, aware siya na hindi aware. Kumbaga, in between that. Na, I don't know if you have uh, tried already being hypnotized by someone. Eh, pag hypnotize ka nga, sometimes you, hindi mo maalala kung ano yung nangyari. Hindi mo maalala kung ano yung mga uh, bagay-bagay na nangyari o yung mga tinanong nila sa'yo during that state. Now, it's it's important to take note that all of this, no, itong narcosynthesis, not acceptable as a legal form of lie detection. So, whatever the procedures of this will not be acceptable as an evidence in court. At the same time, hypnosis, hindi rin po pwede. Why? Because many argues that since nasa state of suggestibility ang isang tao, pwedeng ang gawin niya dito ay uh, yung, yung interrogator mismo, yung nagko-question, uh, yung examiner mismo, ang mag, mag-induce sa kanya, I mean, mag, uh, mag-utos sa kanya na aminin yung isang bagay na wala naman siyang kinalaman. Plus, is not totally aware at this uh, at this specific procedure. So pwedeng gamitin niya na hindi ko kagustuhan yung pagbibigay ko ng information as their defense or hindi naman kaya is that um pwede nilang sabihin na inutusan lang siya ng examiner na aminin yung isang bagay na hindi naman niya kagagawan. So maraming loopholes ang hypnosis as a form of uh, lie detection. I think the the only benefit that uh, hypnosis, the process of hypnosis can bring is with regards to its therapeutical claim, is it therapeutical? Parang ganun, in the field of psychology. No? Ang hypnosis ay ginagamit bilang alternative way of curing yung mga tinatawag nating uh, behavioral problem like for example, phobia yun, pwede nilang gamitin yun. At yun talaga yung unang purpose of or why they develop the concept of hypnosis. Okay, last thing that we are going to talk about is the intoxication process. Na? So when we talk about intoxication, there's a liquor. Na? Now, there is a, some there is this uh, maxim na may ma, may matandang kasabihan na I'm I'm not sure if this is Latin or so. It, it states like this, in vino veritas, no? in vino veritas, in English translation, it means in wine there is truth. No? It is believed that a certain amount of liquor may also serve as a truth serum. I do believe lahat na kayo nakatikim ng alak. No? At there is a specific amount of liquor na pwede nating mainom na kung saan nag, na, nagiging madaldal tayo. No? Hindi natin mapigilan yung bunganga natin sa pag pag uh, sa salita, pagsasabi ng kahit yung mga sekreto. Yun yung yun doon sila nagkakapitalize eh. Na kapag ang tao lasing na at a specific level of liquor, pwedeng mangyari diyan is uh, makapagbunyag yung taong yan ng mga impormasyon na sekreto. Na yung mga nililihim niya, pwede nating malaman kung malasing lang natin ng tama. Di ba, usually ganyan yung ginagawa niya. Pag may isang tao, may mga problem, may, may problema siya at ayaw niyang sabihin sa inyo, sometimes pinapainom yun, then later on nag-open up na yan. Actually, totoo yan. That's, that's really a part of being intoxicated. But then, at a specific portion. Eh, ang mahirap dito, no, we cannot really tell no, kung gaano ba dapat karami yung ipainom natin sa isang tao bago niya ma-reach yung level na yon Kasi there are yung tinatawag nating uh, tolerance. Na magkakaiba tayo ng tolerance eh. Ang probably enough sa akin is too much for you or ang too much sa akin is just enough for you. Parang ganun. So, mahirap talagang uh, i-measure yung specific amount of liquor na dapat matake ng isang tao before niya ma-reach yung uh, state na yun. Na? And then, again, legally speaking, this is not also acceptable. Kasi why would you accept a testimony na? 
that is given by a certain person who is under the influence of liquor and at the same time that is also with that is also true with regards to um administration of drugs now why would you accept the testimony of a certain person who is under the influence of a certain types of drugs so all of the things that i discuss no i think ilan lamang eh ang mga acceptable as an evidence in court sometimes even polygraphy um the use of a polygraph machine is not also acceptable it's a case to case basis no It is a valuable aid in the field of criminal investigation but not much on court presentation kasi yung yung acceptability acceptability nito is depending on the uh, state whether they are accepting the result of a polygraph result dito sa atin the result of a polygraph result cannot really use or cannot be really used as an evidence in court so kahit na lumabas na nagsisinungaling ka No, under the polygraph examination, you cannot really use that as an evidence in court unless magkaroon nga ng agreement uh, with the three party involved. Like for example, si judge agree na gamitin ang polygraph result as an evidence and at the same time si accused nag-agree din and you uh, probably as the uh, victim nag-agree na pare-parehas kayong nag-agree na tatlo na gamitin ang resulta ng polygraph result as an evidence in court that is before the conduct of polygraph test ano bago pa man i-conduct ang polygraph test there should have been an agreement already na meron uh, there should have an agreement that uh, you will use whatever the result or you will accept whatever the result of the polygraph exam is but this is not the same no hindi ito applicable sa narcoanalysis narcosynthesis hypnosis intoxication and so on so hindi siya uh, applicable that is only applicable as part of the exemption under the polygraph examination okay so uh, that wraps up our discussion with regards to the different lie detection methods so uh, 